Jumpin' Mouse Journey to Recovery. Miss Joanne Candy Fire. Mahio, Nishiva Doms, Nido Ho Dai Ayan, Dos Ho Ta, Haim Him, Nishiva Diamond, Numstom, Mino, He Him, Aho. I want to thank you for letting me be here today, and I'm so very glad all of you are here today. I'm going to be telling you a beautiful story that originated from my Cheyenne people. I'm full-blooded Cheyenne Arapaho. I first heard this story from my Red Moon community in Hammond, Oklahoma. As I developed this story, I used it as a teaching tool for young people in alcohol and drug prevention. An anthropologist in 1926, George Berg Grinnell, he uh, noted in his book by Cheyenne Campfires that he heard the Cheyenne speak of a story of a little mouse who gave his eyes to a buffalo bull. And uh, I read about other authors uh, using the same story, the Cheyenne oral traditional story, and some of whom were not Cheyenne or even Native American. They had their own version. In part, I used the story of Jumpin' Mouse, a retold Native American legend by John Steptoe as a basis for my own story, Jumpin' Mouse Journey to Recovery. I would like to thank again the John Steptoe Literary Trust for permission for this videotape presentation. Before I start, I want to introduce my helper, Nikki Fry. Before I start this story, I want all of y'all to think of the word sacrifice, okay? Jumpin' Mouse's Journey to Recovery. Long ago, when Ho'e, the earth, was young, there was a little Hokey, a little mouse. When Eshi, the sun, would peep out, he and the other mice would hunt for madam. They would hunt for food. When Daeva Hodok, the night star, would come out, they would gather around the elders and listen to stories. This little mouse liked to hear what lay beyond the great river, the great Ohe. He would shiver with fear when he would hear about the shadows of the sky, what we call Ottenitz, red tail hawk. His favorite story he liked to hear was about the faraway land, Noah's. This is Bear Butte in South Dakota. This is the center of the universe for Cheyenne and it's our sacred holy place. This little mouse began dreaming about going to the faraway land. In his little mouse mind, the faraway land looked beautiful. One morning before the sun had risen, he started walking on his journey to the faraway land. He comes to the big river. He meets a little green frog on high on a lily pad. And this frog, he tells him he's awfully brave to have reached this great river. And he tells him, why do you want to cross this great river? And this little mouse tells him, I'm searching for my vision of going to the faraway land. And this frog tells him, my name is Magic Frog, and I'm here to help you. The faraway land is where we go to be one with our creator to find higher power. For being so brave, I give you a new name. Your new name is Goga Ahoki, Jumpin' Mouse. 
and I also give you stronger hind legs. All at once, this little jumping mouse feels tingling in his hind legs, and he wonders, who is this higher power Magic Frog speaks of? He takes them across the river. When they get across on the little vibosi, a little leaf, this little mouse asks Magic Frog, how can a little mouse like me ever reach the faraway land? Magic Frog tells him, you will encounter hardships along your journey, but if you keep hope alive inside of yourself, you will reach the faraway land. Stay alive in a good way. So this little mouse, with respect, tells Magic Frog, thank you, and he continues his journey. He walks and walks. He's very careful of the shadows of the sky, and he's searching for berries and seeds along the way. He sees in the distance a hodogia, a shady stream, and he comes right up to it, and he sees another mouse, and this mouse tells him his name is Old Fat Mouse. And he tells him, I once upon a time had that same dream of going to the faraway land, but when I got to the stream, I had everything I needed. Shadows of the sky couldn't see me. Shishinof snakes couldn't come across the stream. Food was plentiful. He said, you can stay here forever if you want. And Jumpin' Mouse says, no, I will just stay here niff four days and get rested. Then I will continue my journey of going to the faraway land. They became good friends. They didn't worry about anything. They ate when they wanted to. They slept when they wanted to. And you know mice don't sleep at night. They just did whatever they wanted to, having fun whenever and wherever. One morning, Jumpin' Mouse gets up early to go get a drink of mop, a drink of water. He sees his reflection in the stream. He can't believe it. It's not him. He's beginning to look just like his friend, Old Fat Mouse. Right then, he realizes he forgot his dream of going to the faraway land. He sees the seriousness of his situation. He sees a branch hanging across that tree, a tree branch hanging across that stream. And he realizes with sadness that a snake can come across. He's scared. He goes running, looking for his best friend. He can't find his best friend. He goes to one last place. He smells a strange smell. He smells snake. He realizes with sadness his best friend got eaten up by that snake. He leaves that mainstream. He never forgets what happened to his best friend because once upon a time, his best friend had wanted to go to the faraway land too. He starts being careful again. He's walking and walking, always looking for the shadows of the sky, and he's searching for food. He sees in the distance like a big boulder, a big rock, and a uh, the closer he gets to it, the bigger it gets. He comes right up to it. He's a brave little mouse. And he says, what are you? And it replies, I am Hodoa, buffalo. And Jumpin' Mouse says, what's wrong with you, buffalo? And buffalo tells him, Nasai Biva Motai. I am very sick. I do not feel well. Without thinking, Jumpin' Mouse said, I wish I could help you. And Buffalo tells him, it will take the eyes of a little mouse to help me be strong again. Without thinking, Jumpin' Mouse tells him he can have his little mouse eyes if that might help him. All at once, his little eyes flew out of his head into this buffalo eyes. Buffalo bull gets up strong and powerful once more again. And this little mouse, of course, can't see. He's blind. And he tells Buffalo his dream of going to the faraway land. And Buffalo tells him, 
If you walk right below me, I will hide you from the shadows of the sky. Along the way, he said, I will take you to the edge of the faraway land. Jumping Mouse tells them everything that's happened to him on his journey. They get to the edge of the faraway land. And Buffalo tells them, thank you. I'm an animal of the plains, and this is as far as I can take you. And Jumping Mouse thanks them. And they part ways, and they go on their separate journey. Now Jumping Mouse is alone on the edge of the faraway land. And he's scared, but he remembers someone told him a long time ago to keep hope alive inside of himself. So he starts walking up the faraway land as good as he can, being blind. And he walks right into some paws that has fur on it. He jumps back in fear. Nothing happens. He smells the air. He smells Holtney. He smells wolf. He knows something's wrong with this wolf for not eating him. So he asks him, what's wrong with you, wolf? And this little wolf tells him, I was once upon a time proud and lazy, and because of this, I lost my sense of smell. Now I'm just waiting here to die. If this little mouse could have seen, he would have seen this little wolf old before his time. And he knew just giving up was not a good way to die. So he thought about it, and he said, Maybe my little mouse nose might help you. You can have it if you want. So this little wolf tastes his little mouse nose. And he's so happy, he begins to smell the pine trees and cedar trees. He starts singing of songs of when he was young. Of course, Jumping Mouse can't smell anymore. And he tells them why he's on the edge of the faraway land. And this little wolf tells him, thank you for his nose. And he said, I will take you up through the faraway land. Along the way, Jumping, tell, Jumping Mouse tells him everything that's happened to him on his journey. And after a while, this little wolf tells him, this is as far as I can take you. And there, uh, Jumping Mouse thanks him. And this little wolf, leaves him and goes on a separate journey. Jumping Mouse is high up on the faraway land and he can't see, he can't smell. He starts feeling sorry for himself because he's thinking about his life. I will never be as I once was. I, you know, he lost his eyes, he lost his nose. But he remembers what's been told to him a long time ago. He begins praying for help. He don't know how to pray or how it will help him, but he thinks if he keeps hope alive inside of himself that maybe everything might be all right. So he begins praying to Creator, have mercy upon me and all my relations. He hears a voice. He quits crying. He recognizes that voice as his good friend, Magic Frog. Magic Frog tells Jumping Mouse, Jumping Mouse, I come here to help you, but you must do everything I tell you to do. This little mouse said, I'll do anything, everything. And then Jumping Mouse started telling them everything that had happened to him since he had last seen him. Magic Frog says, Jumping Mouse, you have encountered a lot of hardships and you were unselfish, and you had a spirit of hope and compassion. A piva, it is good. This is how you have reached the faraway land. You have nothing to fear, Jumping Mouse. I want you to jump, jump high. So this little mouse, he shuts his little eyelids because he has no eyes and he jumps as high as he can. And right then the air begins to pick him up. His, he feels strangely warm and powerful in the sun. 
he opens his eyes to his amazement. He begins to see the earth above and below. He begins to smell the beautiful fragrance of Mother Earth, the sky, and all living things. Magic Frog yells, I give you a new name. Your new name is Eagle. This is the way Ho'e was when the earth was young. Did you all like that story? Yes. Did you all think about that word sacrifice along the story? Yes. OK, I'm going to uh, share 12 questions and go over some goals, OK? Um, first of all, when Jumpin' Mouse was having fun at the stream, did he forget about living in a good way? Um, if we look at how his best friend, Old Fat Mouse, got killed on, by the snake, Shishinophis, we can look at the snake as being alcohol and drugs, okay? And this alcohol just squeezed the life out of his best friend, Fat Mouse, because he forgot about a good way of living, you know. Who was stronger in this story? The mice or the snake? Anyone? The mice. The mice. At one time, he was uh, stronger at the end, huh, when he turned into the eagle. But when he was at the stream, that snake was stronger than him, wasn't He He killed his best friend. So we can look at the snake, alcohol, and drugs as being stronger than fat mouse, old fat mouse. I'm going to go over this first goal, and my helper is going to help me read this. Jolly Mouse looked in the stream and saw his reflection and saw the seriousness of his situation. He had hit rock bottom. <clears throat> Okay, the second goal, the second question I'm going to ask you, okay, when Jumpin' Mouse um, uh, accepted the reality of his life, and this is the first goal, he's seen himself in that stream. He's seen himself as he truly looked. That's goal one. Goal two is when he turns his life over to his creator. He starts searching again for his vision of the faraway land. Remember, he forgot his goal. In his desperation, he remembers surviving in the best possible way was not by staying at the mainstream. He decided to do something to change this. The third question I'm going to ask, when did Jumpin' Mouse let go and let his creator help him? Does anyone know? Yes, yes. Jumping Mouse had a willingness to trust in the unknown. He began to search for a bare butte to be one with his creator. Jumping high as he can, he took that leap, huh? He had faith. Okay, the fourth question I'm going to ask When did Jumping Mouse start thinking about his life? At the stream, he started, looking at mm -hmm. he started thinking of his life kind of all along, didn't he? But uh, when he was up high on the faraway land, he started thinking. Jumping Mouse started thinking about his journey while on the Bear Butte. Why me, he asked. He, st he started thinking about how he would never be as he once was. Okay, the fifth question I'm going to ask. When did Jumpin' Mouse uh, uh, talk to his friend everything about his life and also pray to Creator? When he was in the, um, the forest. Yes, he uh, 
also, you know, when he was on the faraway land, you know, he started talking, telling everything since he had last seen him. His magic frog was his spirit helper. Okay. Jumping Mouse told everything that had happened to him, his journey to Magic Frog and his creator, Higher Power. He was speaking the truth for the first time, as Jumping Mouse now understood. He had gotten a different perspective of his little mouse life. When he learned about himself and he perceived the creator's higher power place, the stronger and more powerful his higher power became. Okay, question six. What were some destructive behaviors that Jumpin' Mouse had? Does anyone know? Destructive behaviors are bad things that he did in his life. Can I? Yeah, he started, like, what he wanted to, eating everything. That he right, wanted to. right. That's good. Didn't he also forget about his goal? He, he forgot about his reason for in his life and also he was very gullible you know he let his best friend talk him into doing something that he didn't really want to do even though jumping mouse liked being at the stream his past he had to leave his old ways he was willing to be free from his destructive behaviors he was truly ready to change and stop being gullible he was prepared to quit having only fun and forgetting to worry about his natural enemies and thinking only of himself when he was with Fat Mouse. Jumping Mouse began to be aware of all these things and what was not good about, good about his life. Okay, question seven I want to ask. Okay, when Jumping Mouse was high up on the faraway land, what are some of the things he learned along his journey when he was praying to his creator? He learned things along his journey. Does anyone know what he learned, maybe? He learned to be teachable, he adapted, he learned um, how to live from the prairie to the plains. Jumping Mouse adapted well, he was becoming teachable. Jumping Mouse learned not to give up, he asked his creator for help. He was facing his fears instead of running away from them, a high value. Jumping Mouse had learned to live blindly on the plains and with no sense of smell in the faraway land. Jumping Mouse did not forget Fat Mouse and how he had died. He learned to be united with his brothers, Buffalo and Wolf. He learned to accept help from others, even when not of his own kind. He was not too special or unique. Okay, question eight. I know all of y'all know this question. Um, who did Jumpin' Mouse hurt the most? Himself. Right, he hurt himself. Uh, sometimes we hurt our family and others, but the person we hurt the most is ourself. Jumping Mouse knew what he may or may not do would be remembered in the spirit world. He began to do what he thought was right in relations to who he had hurt the most, himself and his friend Fat Mouse. He had thought of his friend Fat Mouse a lot. He got rid of his feelings when he became honest. Jumping Mouse had a desire to forgive and to be forgiven. Okay, question nine. Uh, when Jumpin' Mouse uh, thought about uh, who he had hurt in this step, his next goal is telling people he's sorry if it doesn't hurt them and he's not selfish, okay? And can anyone uh, uh, see how he tried to um, tell his best friend, old Fat Mouse, he was sorry? How could he do this after he had already died? Right, right. Does someone else have something else over here? He could pray to his creator. That's a wonderful answer. Also, he made indirect amends. Also, he helped Buffalo and Wolf along his journey because he couldn't, you know, tell his friend that had already died. Okay? Jeffrey Ross made indirect amends to Buffalo and Wolf whose past he had crossed since he could not tell Fat Mouse how he felt. The spirit of unselfishness helped heal his guilt over Fat Mouse's death. Thank you. Okay, question 10. <clears throat> when something bothers us, we try to take care of it right then in a good way, okay? 
How did Jumpin' Mouse accept the bad things in his life? By doing good things to fix them. Right, right. That's wonderful. When something bothered Jumpin' Mouse, he tried to take care of it right then because he didn't see Magic Frog that often. When he had self-pity, he began to pray. The shadows of the sky were his daily fears and Jumping Mouse tried not being discouraged. He returned searching for the sacred bear boot after what happened to Fat Mouse. It bothered him to see other sufferings. So Jumping Mouse showed kindness to Buffalo and Wolf. Jumping Mouse was optimistic. Question 11. When did Jumpin' Mouse become aware of his center of the universe? He became aware of his purpose in life. Anyone? He was up the stream. Mm-hmm. He, he changed his way from that stream. He started going back to his goal, didn't he? Something sacred happened to Jumpin' Mouse. He turned to an eagle. Sacred because the eagle flies closest to our creator. Jumping Mouse strengthened his partnership with his higher power. He was trying to walk in balance with his creator. His spirit was strong because his life depended on it. Jumping Mouse gained a greater understanding of himself. The question 12 I'm going to ask, and I know all of you know this answer because it's really simple. When uh, all the goal of 12 is is helping others and also working all these steps, when did he help others? <laughs> Everyone I knew. When he started helping Buffalo by giving his eyes to him. Right, right. Anyone else? When he helped the wolf with his sense, because he, uh, he lost his sense of smell. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone over there? Oh, when he helped his relations, when he was praying to the Creator, he had to help his relations. Right. Do we learn? things from animals. Can we learn from animals? Yes, yes, yes. How does a little turtle make progress? Anyone? Never giving up. Right. Slowly. Yes. Anyone else? He has to stick his head out for progress, don't he? And he has to have courage to stick his head out. Has anyone ever heard of a panther in the middle of the night? Maybe some of you that hunt with your parents. Have you heard a panther in the middle of the night? It smells like, I mean, it sounds like an old woman screaming. It brings chills to the, your, chills down your back. What a panther will do, will dig a hole in the ground and he'll scream in it. And it sounds like he's real far away, but really he's close beside you. And this is how alcohol and drugs can sneak up on a person. And we've got to have goals in our lives. And we can't get sidetracked like his best friend, Fat Mouse, did and Jumping Mouse did for a little while. Thank you very much.